What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Oban Elliott before his UFC debut at UFC 298 coming up here. We're not too far away now, Oban. UFC debut. We've Look, we've talked many times before. We've talked many times about getting to the UFC, about the dream. And suddenly the dream is realizing you're there only a few days out now from, from the UFC. How, how, how does it feel to be a UFC fighter finally? Yeah, ah, oh, just the in the introduction is mad. Um, it, it doesn't. It, do you know what? I finally feel content. It's like I'm fi- I'm satisfied. Finally, I'm like all, all my stress is gone because it was all I ever wanted to do. And it's like it's not. I guess it's quite an unha- unhealthy way to um, live your life. But uh, I've always wanted to be it. I was never satisfied in Cage Warriors. That's why, like, when I turned professional, two, three, four fights in, I was like, give me the title shot because I get the title shot. Then I'm, you know, everything was just about getting to the UFC. And now I'm in the UFC. It's like, I can actually enjoy what I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I, I'm actually living a dream. I'm, I'm so grateful for the position I'm, I'm finally in. I'm, I'm just really so happy, honestly. Some people might listen to that from not just yourself, but any sports person, and kind of go, "Is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing?" Like that, the you know, sometimes the pressure drives people, and like the want and the need drives people. When maybe that pressure is off, there isn't as much of a drive there. But what, have you felt that? Oh, no, that the drive is there. Yeah, the drive is there. Trust me. Um, oh my God, the drive is like is like quadrupled. Maybe I didn't use the right words in what I said there, but like mentally, uh, day to day, I'm like so much happier because I'm just like, I just got to like check myself every now and then. I'm like, you know, my my reason for getting up and going out the door every day was one day I'm going to be in the UFC and then it happened. So like, it's, it's such a weird, it's so hard to put it into words. Um, but like, yeah, the the drive now I'm there. It's like I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. I'm so happy and like, I'm training. Hard. It's like it's it's made it so much easier to train harder. I can't explain it. It's just I've just gone. I've just gone up the levels as a person, as a man, and hundred percent as a fighter. Just by there's a saying, right? You win the belt, it makes him a better fighter overnight, kind of thing. And you know, this is like that contender series fight was like winning the belt. Well, I beat I beat a world champion, didn't I? Yeah. For a start. So like, yeah, the drive is just like it's like now I finally got where I want where I want to be. The drive is is it's even more. But it's not desperate now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like a scratch and a claw. Now it's right. It's time to fucking play the game now. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's almost as if like I'm, I'm, it's hard to it's hard to put it into words. Yeah, sorry. you can be like more tactical and technical and like cerebral about your preparations than just like clawing and you know. Yeah, but just no, it's just like every day was just a. It was just a, it felt so much more of a chore when I wasn't in the UFC. I'll be honest. That's just a that's just an honest take on it. It's like fucking out, you know. If I'd have picked it up and, you know, perhaps I should have been more grateful to go through Cage Warriors and that. Um, but I was just so hell-bent on getting to where I always wanted to get to. It was like every little bit of it was just like, oh, come on, I've got to win this fight because I've got to, I can't slip up. I slipped up twice in Cage Warriors. I can't slip up. It was just like a, ah, oh, fuck. I, everything was just such a thing. Now I can really be just like one fight at a time and just enjoy it. I'm, just, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I am loving life. I like the drive. The, there's no, there's never a concern for the drive, mate. I'm like a man possessed in the training room. Worse than I was before I got in. I'm like a, it's like, oh my God, I wish I could put it into words. Honestly, it's a shit start to the interview, but it's, no, uh, but we'll, uh, it's yeah. an interesting one though. Cause like, it's, I think I suppose people have to get that, you know, I, we hear about it from like, it's, imagine this, imagine yeah. this, imagine this, you're working up a job, right? 
and for fucking and, and, for, and for five years, you're like assistant manager, and you're like fuck this, I should be the manager. And then you become the manager. You're like no, now it's <laughs> now it's time to fucking now I'm running the show. I mean, like everything is amplified. Everything's it's like a it's like a I told you so kind of attitude I've got now and, and I'm I'm fully, fully confident in what I'm about to do in, in the UFC. I'm you know this is where I've always should have been. Is is that a bit of it as well as like it's it's not just like you toiled to get there, you said you'd get there, but now like, I remember I, I tweeted about the one the first times I interviewed you, I was like, this is the next guy. This is the next, you know, we had Ian Gary, we had Paddy Pimble coming through Cage Warriors and whoever else, and now we have Oban Elliott. And people have been saying that about you for, uh, you know, a, a long time. There were some people who fell off the tracks. You know, you mentioned the two losses and came back. It's not as if you haven't had, you know, experienced failure. It's not as if you haven't experienced tough times, but you've both proven people right and proven people wrong at the same time. And it's like, it's, yeah. you know, some, some people get there and they're just right. It's the dream and they get there and it's pretty easy. And then maybe, you know, you could float and maybe you could not try as hard. But for you, you, you know what it's like to fall. And if you don't prepare, you're going to fall again. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, funnily enough, right? I don't know if he, uh, I don't know if he would mind me saying this, right? I had a chat with one of the boys in the gym, right? Put it this way. Um, and he's just coming off a loss. Uh, and I said, look, mate, take your lot. Like, I'm so glad I had my losses when I had it because like, I'm going to the UFC now fresh with all these, I'm like a, a much more sharpened blade than I would have been if I just squeak, if I just flew through, uh, Cage Warriors, you know, six, seven, and oh, like I did at amateur, six, seven, and oh, boom, smashed everybody. Never really had any like adversity in the cage, never had any adversity outside of it, never went the distance. You know, oh, yeah, he's blitzing for everyone, but he's in inex you're inexperienced at the end of the day. And now I'm in a position where I'm 26 years old, I've got a much older head on my shoulders, and I'm a fully, you know, I'm not finished growing yet, but I'm a physical specimen. And my skills are only getting better. My experience, my fight IQ, it's all just, everything happens for a reason, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, this is perfect. Pay-per-view, California, come on. This is, this is everything I've, I knew that would happen. I literally, like, predicted it. You know, I mean, yeah, I had my losses, but I never, I never once hung my head, no, hung my head. Look, you know, and I got disheartened. Yeah, I was annoyed. Yeah, I was upset, frustrated, but I knew I'd always get you. So this is, you know, this is where this is where I belong, and I'm going to prove that with, with this fight. I'm gonna, this fight, I'm gonna put forward. It's, it's a big change from uh, Nando's and the railways. Have you been working in this camp or? Have Fucking you... right, it is, mate. <laughs> well, what way is the work situation? Uh, yeah, bits and bobs. Bits of bobs, <laughs> wheeling it, wheeling and dealing. <laughs> oh, I'll never, I'll never stop. <laughs> but like I suppose that's one of those things mm. as well. I suppose you have to have that chat with yourself. I suppose whether you, you know, you pack in the job and you go full time or you wait a few fights, because like it's it's a tough situation. Nah, I'm full time. I'm yeah. I'm full time. Yeah. Just just like rather than sitting here watching a fucking Netflix episode or rinsing a series, I might I'll, I'll do bits and bobs in between. But I'm full time. I don't. No, my set, my training schedule is as full time as it could possibly be, thanks to the the position I'm now in with the UFC and my sponsorships and yeah, just I've been like I said, I was four years ago. I was on fifty pound a day, paying fucking five hundred pound plus in in uh, bills. And now I'm looking at buying Rolex watches. Do you know what I mean? Where'd you get all that money from? So just, <laughs> uh, I, I can't say that over the phone. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. uh, I'm just grateful for the position I'm in. So like, as I said, you know, when you're scratching and clawing, like, I'm like, a, I'm still that, I'm still that kid who's scratching and clawing. I'm just, Pablo Escobar put it right. You know, he has obviously a 
a very uh, terrible man in some in a lot of ways. Like, but he said he's not a rich man; he's a poor man with money. So, like in my instance, is yeah, I'm in the UFC, but it doesn't mean I don't have that mindset of being rock bottom skin coming off. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. it's all there. It's all there. So. I would ask you about this Kike Brito fight in the Dana White Contender Series because I, I went back and I watched it this morning and it was a lot more of a clear fight for you than I had remembered at the time and maybe because it was just such a crazy fight and it was just such a like, the, the, especially the second round, the madness where you were kind of out on your feet and you came back and, you know, you, what we had spoken before and you, you, know, you said you were willing to go out and die and to go into that fight to get to the UFC and they said that in the commentary as well and like, I've I've never seen someone say that before a fight and then actually kind of have to prove it in a fight. You know, a lot of people say it and they don't have to prove it or say it and they can't prove it, but you actually went out and did it. Well, thinking back on that it was, fight, it, was the, it must be insane to think back what you did in that fight. It was the perfect storm, wasn't it? It was the perfect storm, wasn't it? The, the literal, the package that they played before we walk out I watched it live as I was about to walk out I had tears coming down my face and I was literally like as you say people say it right and I've never said something I don't mean and when it comes to when it comes to that mate as you literally watched you would have had to kill me and I'm so grateful of the referee I had because like Another ref might stop it, and I'd be I'd have just been fucking devastated forever. Like, you know what I mean? It's like that first round, as you say, and you probably watched it at the time because it was mad. Like, but you watch it back, I clearly win the the fight. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. But at the time, mate, I didn't have a clue if I won or not. I, like, I can't remember. I couldn't remember it. <laughs> like, I remember the last round. I remember like the second half of the last round, but. The first, like, I didn't really know. I was asking my coach, I was like, have we got that? And he went, yeah, 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. I was like, okay, so. So, like, because, um, the, like, the first half of the second round, I won. I was doing really well up until I got caught with that big shot. And, mate, that would have knocked anyone out. That would have, that would have, that could have, you know what I mean? But I'm just, there's no words that can justify what, what, you know, like all you got to do is watch the fight and you see what I'm about. You know what I mean? What goes through your head in that position? On and the, the same. Round? Say again. What goes through your head when you're in a position like you are in that second round? Like where? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. What? I was thinking, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm fucked here. Yeah. I remember thinking like, oh, no, the ref's good. He's going to stop it. He's going to yeah. stop it. He's going to stop it. And I was stumbling around, mate, and I felt like at the time, you watch it back, I wasn't doing that. I felt at the time I was doing like 360s. I felt like I was going, I did not, I could not get my equilibrium. So I was just thinking at the time, fuck, fuck, this is, oh no, oh no, the ref's going to come in. And I heard the ref say, fight back, fight back. And I literally hit him with the right hand. This kept me in it. If you watch it, it's a right hand and it's photographed as well, the right hand. It kept me in it. It stopped him in his tracks. Um, but the whole time in that round, I thought it's over because obviously I wasn't able to return the strikes. I was trying to defend myself, but he was landing. I thought, you know, got, I'm not going to stop fighting here. I wasn't thinking give up. I was thinking if I could move better than I was at the time, I would, but I just was physically in, in such a compromised position. But like the heart pulled through like I show my heart mate because other people like that they curl up and they take the fucking TKOs mate. you know what I mean and we've seen it time and time you see it every week not me willing to die mate is every it, single time is that a combination of like heart and preparation you hear you know your, your guy Chel Sonnen says it all the time about cardio will yeah. get you through things like that do you think it was a bit of both You're fucking right 100% 100%. Look, I didn't feel tired, right? They were saying on the on the commentary, I felt like I didn't feel tired. I just had no equilibrium. You know what I mean? But, like, as you say, yeah, I was in great shape. Like, my legs, I had strong foundation on my legs. And, yes, by the grace of God, mate, I took, I could, you know, I was able to get through that second round because 
five minutes changed my fucking life. You know what I mean? How do so, you how do you do what you did in the third then? Because like you shouldn't have been able to do what you did in the third after that second. Like it makes no sense. Did you see in between the second and the third? I literally stood up, looked at him, and he was hanging over the thing. I looked at him, put my arms out, and said, I'm ready to die, boy. Yeah, when I saw the hands coming up, I was like, <laughs> you know, in retrospect, I was like, what's, what's this lad doing? It was absolutely crazy. But the speech, <laughs> the speech you got from the coaches between rounds as well. Like, I, sometimes you listen to coaches yeah. and you're like, oh, what are they doing? But they told you, like, you know, don't go mad now in the first couple of minutes here. Take your time. Don't throw anything mm. mad. Smart. Yeah, Carl, Carl says, dance for me. Cause, mm -hmm. Because... To go back to the previous loss, Flaminas, right? He caught me in that guillotine. Mm -hmm. I was nearly out in that guillotine. It gassed me out. I was dazed. And he was, Carl was saying to me in the Flaminas fight, dance for me in the, dance for me now, get your breath back. But in the Flaminas fight, I charged him. He flipped the position. I lost. But so it's like, it was like a, it's like a flashback to the Flaminas fight. Like, listen, dance. And I just danced on the back foot. I got my breath. I could see how tired he was. And I thought, I'm going to fucking take this to him now. I drop him with the left hand. He throws that spinning back fist, but I've cracked the left hand on the way through. His eyes were rolling onto the back of his head on the canvas. So just, mate, it was like a Rocky film, wasn't it? That's crazy. It's crazy. I just can't believe that that is like happened in my life, honestly. For all I've, all, for all I've wanted and, and like anticipated and thought about myself, but the fact that actually happened in my lifetime, a fight like that for all the fucking marbles. It's just, it still hasn't sunk in. Honestly, mad. And there was not only that, but then you had like the terror of waiting to see if you actually got a contract. And you know, we had this Daniel, I just thought, <laughs> Daniel yeah, but, Army but, gone mad. As you say, yeah. I thought I got it though. I'll be honest. I thought I got it. I, like, I just thought, if he doesn't give me this, like, he's fucking mad. Genuinely. Like, I thought I got it. And I actually spoke to him as well on the way past and said, right, I love you, Dana. I said something like, I love you, Dana. You're my childhood. I just got done with the world champion. And if you want me to add everybody in there to that list, then don't sign me. But I know you'll do the right thing. And he went, go and do your fucking interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, it was best day. That's just the best thing that's ever, mate. It's literally like dream come true. I I just can't believe it. Still. And what was Back. it like then when you uh when you got that call for your UFC debut? Because like it's it's weird because the Dana White contender series is like it's almost like you're in the UFC but you're not quite there yet. Then you get to the UFC. Then you have like mm. that come down almost and then you have to go and actually make the UFC debut when you got that call when you got the name Val Woodburn was that another thing you're like well, well this is a name and a date I'm just going to go for it or was it another emotional time it was it was just excitement honestly mate like just excitement it's like oh my god it's happening it's like I could stop fucking I could stop crying about it now it's happening no complaints. You know what I mean? Like, and then, yeah, but, and then they tell me I'm on UFC 298. And they just released the card. I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm coming out in the red corner. I'm like, like, dr I don't care. Dreams actually come true. Like, how am I so lucky for this to happen in my life? You know what I mean? It's like, fuck. Of course, it's not just luck. It's like, it's um hard work as well, but my God, I'm so grateful. Honestly, it's unbelievable. It's fucking hell. Like, and I don't sit and talk about it too much, right? Because when I do, I'm like, I sit and just think and about, like, I've got a fight in two weeks and I'm not, it's just like a, I'm thinking of like a kit little drive to the York Hall or a Cage Warriors fight or just like a, but no, nah, no, nah, I'm I'm gonna go to Heathrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna be in a hotel with the best fighters in the world. I'm gonna be in California, and I'm gonna be fighting in the stadium where John Jones head kicked BC. What the fuck? And some scumbag from the valleys <laughs> is doing that. You know what I mean? Fucking hell. 
like say no more. Greg Carr, like with Robert Whitaker on it, Volkanovski in Taporia, Henry Cejudo, Dashville. You're all friendly in Gary as well. Must be nice you've been you've been around with uh, Ian Gary. Ian Gary. For a long time. Yeah. Yeah, mate. And it's weird, like the fucking last time I spoke to him was before he won the Cage Warriors belt. And then the next time I spoke to him was when I got in the UFC. And the next time I'm gonna see him is at this uh, is at this card. Yeah. But uh mate, fuck me. You've got me thinking about it now. It's just yeah. pretty mind blowing. It's funny though, because like, you know, of the I, I'm looking at here on the cards, like Taporia fought uh, Oh, Sorry, you just uh, you just uh, <laughs> you went out and back in for a second. The internet probably, but I'm not, I'm just looking at the yeah. card here. Like Taporia fought in Cage Warriors. Obviously, Ian was in Cage Warriors. Yourself were in Cage Warriors as well. It's like mm. you know, sometimes as you said, these things are meant to be, and the people you know to come up a similar way, end up in a similar place at a similar time, and it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of mad. Do you, I know you think think about things like that, but is is it good? I suppose to have maybe a few familiar faces around as well uh, for for a very unfamiliar uh, time and a very unfamiliar fight, I suppose, than what you've had before. It's not unfamiliar. If I'm being honest with you, I was in that USC Apex like I fucking owned the place. <laughs> I was looking around. I can't explain it, right? It's finally I'm satisfied. It's like finally I'm not... I look around some of the change rooms I've warmed up there. And I've always been like, fuck am I doing here? I'm actually going to enjoy it. You know that's, that's just the truth. And I'll enjoy this. I, I, I might feel well. No, I will feel content. I felt content at the contenders. You know, it's the best I've ever fought. Seeing superhuman fighting uh, abilities going on there. Do you know what I mean? Like some insane superhuman gas like superhuman chin, able to take down what was an absolute monster in front of me. You know, it's like. This is where I belonged. So yeah, Ian and all and Elia, like they are familiar, but I'll I'll look at Ian and Elia the same way I'll look at Bruce and Dana. I'm there to do my job, you know. It's mad, mate. Yeah, of course it's going to be surreal. I haven't done it yet. I'm fully prepared for how surreal it's going to feel, but. This is where I feel I've truly belong. Like I've visualized this so much. Yeah. Is are there things are like uh, you know I probably have to do the medicals have to sign the contract. Even you were telling me there before we started this morning the drug tester was there, which is a little bit different. Oh yeah. Uh, tell tell us what happened with the drug testing this morning when they called. The drug tester, right? So, <laughs> so if I'm uh, and I don't like really answering the door, right? I just just don't like answering the door, right? So. I don't know if it's going to be like a parking ticket fucking debt collector or a parking ticket out and pay or something. But doorbell goes, right? And I'm like, who on earth could that be whilst I'm finishing my morning piss? So then, hi, mate. Yeah, yeah, on behalf of the UFC, I'm like, ah, right. Yeah, come in, mate. Bad news. I've just been to the toilet, right? So I'm drinking, necking pints of water. Wait, he was there for an hour and a half, right? So I've got a dartboard there. I just start thinking, right, stop throwing darts, right? And he sits on the set. He's just talking to me, telling me about the drug test procedure. And I'm just pinging the darts in, like, bang, bang. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, he, uh, he's just sitting there. And I go, you any good darts here, Mark? He went, oh, yeah, go on, I'll give you a game, man. Go on, we had a little game of darts. <laughs> Who won? And then give, I, give him the, I give him the gold dust, and I won. I give him the gold dust, and uh, off he went. Mad. Was that the first one you've had, or have you even had that? In... Oh no, I've had tests before. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I win my first. Yeah, yeah. When they sign in the UFC, they 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 are straight on me, mate. Interesting. That's you know what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not a very nice thing to have people call into your door like that. But still, I suppose it, I suppose it has. To nah, be I don't mind it, mate. Yeah, it's all part of the it's all part of the dream, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mad. So, what do you think of uh, what do you think of yeah. Val Woodburn? He's obviously, you know, he's had one fight in the UFC. He fought Bo Nickel, got very tough first assignment. 
obviously, and now he uh, he draws all Van Elliot. What, what what are your opinions? Well, I know I know you have some thoughts on it. Let me know. Ah, he's brave, man. He hasn't really got a choice in. Uh, he hasn't got a choice when he's fighting, is he? But he's a brave man. I don't like his chances at all. Uh, but you know, I can't. I can't think he's. I can't disrespect him in any way, shape, or form, can I? Because he's a. You know, he's a. He's a professional fighter, and he's accepted to fight against me, and he's going to train his artists and fight me on the biggest in on the biggest stage in our sport in the world. So, but if I'm going to break him down, like. I've got enough. I've got no breakdown, technical breakdown for him. He's gonna be a topless man trying to kill me in a cage in front of twenty. Well, in front of the masses. So I gotta be ready. But mate, there's just there's just no way he's gonna beat me. How how do you That's deal with a guy like him or prepare? Because he's straight, isn't it? he's very wild, like and he throws those big elbows off the brakes and like it's it's not exactly like your normal technical fighter that you can prepare for. Like do you when you're preparing for a guy like that, mm-hmm. do you get guys to go against you and be wild and you be technical, or are you gonna take away that wildness and try to put him on his arse and take him down? I don't I don't want the game plan obviously here, but like. How, it must be difficult to prepare for a guy like that who isn't a normal your normal fighter, you know. I just focus on getting myself getting better every day. So if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm grappling with the best grapplers and I'm and I'm wrestling with the best wrestlers and I'm MMA fighting, you know, the best MMA fighters. If I'm you know I'm boxing pro boxers, sparring wise, you know. So like I'm not sitting there thinking what's Val Woodburn gonna do to me. I'm sitting there thinking, I wonder, I wonder what way I'm gonna beat him because what, I've got it all. And what do you think? I've, what I've, what, I've, what I've, way do you I've, think you will beat him? Where do I think I'll beat him? Mm. Uh, I feel like giving a prediction like this is doing the other man a disservice, right? But I, I, I don't know how I'm going to beat him. But I don't know how on earth I have no idea, right, how on earth he is going to stop me doing whatever I want to him. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but I cannot think of one thing in my head where he's going to be able to stop me doing whatever I want to him. That's my... That's my the prediction, I could knock him out with the first jab, couldn't I, like Bo Nickel did. He made Bo Nickel look like Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What the fuck am I going to do to him? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What do you think, so, the, the last, the last I, couple I, of things? I, yeah. What, what do you think of the size? Because obviously you were down at Lightweight for a, a good portion of your career. You you know, you're genuine... Uh, uh, welterweight now, although there was a bit of a stint higher up as well for 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 a few few minutes there. But he's a you know he's not the tallest in the world, but he's a big boy. Like I had fought at middleweight, obviously a few times before. What do you think of like the size difference? You think that'll play a factor? Well, you think he's bigger than me? Well, like he's no, he's not tall. I wouldn't say he's taller than you. Pretty like, similar, but like he seems to be like a very mu- like. Let's put it this way: I think he'll be cutting a lot more weight than you. You think he's stacked? He is that, like a little, like a little Hussamar Paul Paul Harris. Yeah, exactly. There's that's that's a good one. Hey, I just think he's fucked. <laughs> I just don't know. That's a good way around it. Like just, that is a good way around it. You know. 
Oh God. I I don't know how, you know, I'm obviously gonna see him like um and he's just had that fight with Bo Nickel as well. It's like fucking hell man, what what are they doing with the, this kid? Like can't they chuck him in the apex and beat up beat up a scrub who remember that guy who's like faked his record? Yeah. Did you see that guy? Yeah, Murza Murza. Yeah, can't they give him someone like that? Yeah. Can't they give him someone like that? But instead he's got a fight like fucking hell. Uh he could be as big as small big or small. Uh, mate. I am absolutely zero interest the size the muscles on him. I'm gonna school him. Honestly. And he's gonna probably gonna try he's definitely gonna try and kill me. You know what I mean? He's gonna look look at the look at the Brazilian. Same job as that, but yeah. It's weird, right? I don't really have much to say on it, other than. Yeah, but you do. You're you're talking with your fists. You know, that's the way. Hey, that's the way it's done. Honestly, I'm gonna kill him. But yeah, yeah, just whatever. I it's, I could sit here and say I'm gonna beat. I'm gonna head kick him. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I don't know exactly how this fight's gonna go. I haven't got a clue. But all I know is I'm just gonna give it my all on my last one, and and yeah, I'm gonna really. I'll, I'll prove why I'm in the UFC, put it that way. I'll prove... I'll put the ultimate fighter in the ultimate fighting championship. I'll show exactly what the fuck I'm going to... What I'm about in this, in this I night. Love, I love it. Can't wait to see it. Last question for me, right? So, UFC 298, UFC pay-per-view. You know what that means? That means Chel Sonnen is going to be there on the desk before the fight, after the fight. You've never, you've never met your guy Chel Sonnen before, have you? Is this going to be the first opportunity to meet Chael? I, I, I feel like I'm breaking news to you here, but are you looking forward to that? Fuck. Oh, right. Chael's going to be there. I, th I think so anyway. Like, I, th I think so. He usually is for the better. He's going to be there, isn't he? Yeah. Say so. And Chael, no, Ch Chael, Chael uh, gave me the message on, uh, on Twitter when, before I got banned. Bullshit reason why I got banned. Yeah, why'd you get banned, actually? Uh, I meant to ask you about that. What, what happened there? <sighs> I, um, so, Colby, right, was talking all that nonsense to Leon, right? Yeah. And I just put a tweet up, and it wasn't that bad. I said something like, Colby, I, I hope one day I get to cave your head in. Leon is gonna kick the shit out of you tomorrow night. I'll, I'll act and then like, I went to sleep. Yeah. I went to sleep. I woke up and I was banned. But Colby, what a fucking! Oh my god! Fair play to Leon for keeping it together in that instance. Like Jesus Christ! I don't know why we didn't just. I don't know why we didn't have him shot. Do you know what I mean? Really bad, no worries. I don't just don't know how I don't know how you harness that aggression, but when you go down that road, like then I fucking hell, mate. Ho oh, oh. But yeah, that's why I got banned. Um because of fucking Colby, the shit that was. Was it was but, worth it, like was worth jail. it. <laughs> jail, yeah. What you jail, yeah. Jail gonna be there, like jail's gonna be there. This just gets fucking when is this gonna stop getting do you know what I mean? I haven't seen Chael since I went around his house. Did I tell you about that? No. What happened there? I I told you about that. I'm oh, I, th sure. I think you might have, all right. But for the people who might never have heard of where, where he made me a maid man in his house. Yeah. And he gave me the... Cut and we back, talked about the, the strategies. <laughs> yeah. We talked about we talked, we talked talked about the strategy. We, we knew the contender series was the way in. Mm -hmm. We kept that under wraps. That's why he, he was texting me. He was like, make sure you keep selling this contenders thing. You know, this is what we discussed. Yeah. As he is then. No. So it'll be, it'll be a nice reunion for the, the Welsh good. gangster, the American gangster. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Haven't, yeah, it's been ages. Yeah. Been, wait, been waiting for this day for a long time. Right. Mad. 
Oh Ben, thank you very much for your time. As always, it's uh, you know you're making me look no like you're making me look like a genius because I said you'd be in the UFC years ago. So it's it's great. Like it's it's a win for you. It's a win for me. You know, and it's... you nah mate, you called, you said it as it was. You said it as it was. Fair play to you. It was always going to happen. As my deme- I feel like my demeanour's changed. I don't know. Sometimes in these interviews. Yeah, but sometimes like you're you're in a mood to be, you know mad and fucking I can't wait and I need to do this but sometimes you know calm cool and collected is the way you need to be too isn't it yeah I think that's I'm a bit bipolar you fucking know me better than you realise probably no, there you go <laughs> there you go any final yeah. thoughts before we, we finish it up no nah. I like it alright oh man thank you very much for honest. joining me thank you to everybody for tuning in nice and, one, uh, mate. tune in for UFC 298 thank you or Oban takes on Val Woodburn. Good luck.